Hola, kids fighting connoisseurs. This is KidNate of BloodyElbow.com, joined once again by the inevitable, the ineffable, the ineluctable Eugene S. Robinson, author of Fight. Everything you ever want to know about ass kicking, but we're afraid you get your ass kicked for asking. Eugene, we need to. Nice! Hey, well, we're three years in, and you have mastered it, man. That's it, a great it, learning curve. It is, it is. I'm pretty incredible that way. It's the. Power of practice, I guess. What can I say? But we are here for it the care. Don't I, I understand that it makes perfect. Well, or less imperfect in my yes, case. Yeah, but there you go. Back to the business at hand. UFC London, Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping, Care Don't Care preview. Eugene, we need a disclaimer. Disclaimer. All the crybabies and bedwetters who might take offense at what we're about to say know this has more to do with the marketing might and heft that the UFC has put behind you and less about your skills and talents as a fighter. If you deserve to move from the don't care to the care column, fight an exciting fight. It is possible. We will remember you. Or you can fight a, an extremely terrible fight and we'll also remember you. We just won't care about you. So for you crybabies and bedwetters, do not take it personally. It's not about you. It's about the game. Crybabies, bedwetters, bedwetters, crybabies. And greedy. Hey, 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 kid Nate, did, did I make that? Did I make that clear? Bedwetters, crybabies. Did I get that in there? You enough? got. You got those in there, but you left out greedy bread gobblers. Uh, and, uh, well, they're work shy individuals. They're greedy bread gobblers, and uh, <laughs> and then there's a third one, which is a little bit harsher. Life not worth living uh, that is pretty we cool. call these nazi euphemisms and 60 kids in nazis <laughs> we're covering all the bases today we're on a tight deadline reminder this fight card is on fight pass it happens in london in the evening time happens in north america in the afternoon late morning i think 12 30 eastern time is when it begins there are okay so now we have to go through this so uh, it's all on fight pass. Eastern time. all on fight pass uh, all on Fight Pass, 12.30 Eastern time is... Uh, it's like uh, 9, 9.30 uh, Pacific time, dude. It's all right, good. I'm awake. I'm awake yeah. then. Check, check out UFC.com and tell your kids, don't be bothering dad today. Daddy's working. That's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they get confused because they come in, they see me with a bottle of wine. They go, what, daddy's working again? <laughs> exactly. exactly. No, this is my medicine. I'm working again with medicine. Yeah, I, my wife's pretty mad because uh, she's going to have to take the kid to a Chuck E. Cheese party, and I'm out of it. So. Oh, she's mad about this? There's she, nothing have you more been to a joyful. Chuck E. Cheese party? Yeah, oh, I have. And there's nothing more joyful than an angry 17-year-old in a rat costume while kids urinate in a ball pen. <laughs> we all hey, get our joy where we can find these it. These are things that only parents see. It's true. Boy, you see some things at Chuck E. Cheese that you can't unsee. You know, I used to but, love to have parties for my kids there because I would drag all these like these uh, 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 one percenters and their kids to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and I wasn't watching the kids. I was just watching the parents get super uncomfortable at the low rentage of the whole affair. It was fantastic. <laughs> Last time I was at Chuck E. Cheese, there was a yuppie dad who had a, 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 a Santa, you know, like some hand soap in his hand, like sanitizer, just squirting his hands every time he touched anything. Was, <laughs> uh, oh, no, it was great. There's nothing more joyful than, than getting a billionaire to see how the other 99% live. It's fantastic. Yes, hey, look is. at that kid peeing in the, in the colored balls. And I'd just be like, yeah, he's peeing in a, That's how we live, 99%, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I hate when they come out with a big new money-making idea, though, when they see how the uh, sheeple are bleeding around. All right, so we've got, it looks like, 10 fights on the Fight Pass prelim card and then four fights on the Fight Pass main card. So we're going to run through this quick. I predict two cares tops on the prelims, Eugene. Yep. All right, here we go. I'm not, I'm, not feeling in an, I'm not feeling in a very caring mood, but I'm not feeling in a very caring mood for very positive reasons, and it's mostly because of... The, the major eclipse that's occurring now, and I can't really think of anything other, and you know what I'm talking about. I don't Conor even have McGregor to say and Nate Diaz. Is that My God, mean? man. That's just blotted out. You know, you know, this is the thing. You can go low rent in a good way, and you can go low rent in a bad way. 2.5 mil, I got you, but it, Dada, Kimbo, bad way. You know, low yes. rent, good way, we're seeing it, baby. God we God. are. We are, and did you see Nick Diaz is talking smack and wanting a piece of Conor McGregor too? Which sets it up perfectly. It's oh yeah, up. 
if Nate loses, if Nate loses, then you got Nick in the wings. It's the whole revenging the brother thing, Matt. It is just, this is a great WWE storyline, but it's real. I mean, it's like, you know, my God, this is great. Really yes. great. And, and, and if G loses, big deal. He goes into his next fight in his division, depleted people. It's money no matter what. It's money to the left of you, money to the right of you. It's really fantastic. We go from the dregs, the depths to, you know, and he was right. He called RDA a bum, you know. It, it, a That's lot of a things. bit much. What's that? That's a bit much. That's a little harsh. It's, it, it's, a little, it's a little harsh, you know, but at the same time, I don't say he does the fight. I say he he milks it and goes crazy with the – and then the day before, you cancel. <laughs> but you let the bald <laughs> one know, so they got a backup, so it's, it's still a credible switch. But, um, but you don't give McGee enough time to kind of degrade you in the press, which he didn't have because – Nate was right there, you know. Yeah. And I'm glad they picked Nate instead of Cerrone. That would have been. Does anybody is anybody listening outside of the Cerrone family need to see Cerrone fight more right now? I I'm not feeling the Cerrone myself. I love him. He's entertained me many times. Brave cat, skilled cat, but Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. Ah, it's magic. Chemistry, they call it. Chemistry. Yep. All right, let's get to the business at hand. Lightweights: David Timer and Martin Svensson. Don't care. Me neither. All right, lightweights, Timu Pakalan and Tibo Golti. Ah, Timo, the Finnish name. guy. Yep, yep. It's it's funny names. I I, I care because of Finland just a little bit, but not enough to really care. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right, so heavyweight Daniel Emelianczyk versus Janice Donho. Yeah, I, I almost care because they've got a, 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 a Polish fighter there, right? But uh, yeah, yeah. but I, I don't really care. Uh, I mean, the guys who come from KSW are, are pretty tough guys, but we just saw one get dispatched by uh, who uh, was it? OSP who dispatched him? Yes. Uh, the, the, well, I can't remember, but they have a big hole in their game. It's called wrestling. Learn yep. it. And this is and this is the thing with you know you gotta you know the countries where Germany they I mean you you could tell it's easy way to tell do they have a word for wrestling in the language? You know, ringen is what it's called in German. They, they, I, I don't know that you can wrestle in high school, but there are plenty of wrestling clubs. They don't have it in England, you know, or no. other other countries. So, which is sad because England, the ancestral yeah. form of catch wrestling. Yeah, Billy Robinson, Wigan, Wigan, England, Snake Pit. I was when I was in Liverpool, we took a run by there. You know, it was just a crappy little place, but modern yeah. MMA you can trace back to England yep. as much as Japan or Brazil, but yep, exactly nonetheless, right. they forgot exactly. their heritage. So here's the one fight I think you're going to care about. Lightweight, Norman Park and Rustam Kabbalah. Yep, sure, care. Yep. care, and, and, and have a pick, and it's going to be Kabbalah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's a pretty no-brainer right there. I got yeah. I got to second that. I got to yeah. second that emotion. All you right. got to second that emotion. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just Careful, did that. I break out I did that. That, was, that was for the benefit of the lunatic Sorrell. Who's lurking see. around the periphery here? I see. Careful! I heard he breaks into uh, choreographed Motown dance steps. At the same time. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Middleweight: Brad Scott and Christoph Jotko. I don't, I don't care. I don't either. Jotko has barely convinced me to care in the past. I don't care. All right. Featherweight: Arnold Allen and Yeltsin Meza. Okay. All right, Matt. See. Uh, I don't care. No, me neither. Sorry, guys. All right. Middleweight: Scott Ashcram and Chris Dempsey. Uh, almost care a little bit for Chris, Chris Dempsey, but it doesn't. It's not a transitive quality. Caring about Dempsey doesn't make me care about the fight in total. So yeah, no, I don't quite care about Dempsey either. We've talked about him in the past because yep. of his namesake, Jack Hands of Stone Dempsey. All right, yeah, Hands the of Stone. professional rapist. You always yeah. mention that. I gotta look into that. So like, what did he do? He worked at a brothel with. He worked for the mob in a brothel as a, a breaker inner, and that involved if you work in a brothel as a breaker inner, it involved rape. So. Yeah. yeah, breaking the will of the unwilling. What a lovely profession. All right, so what a horrible world. Anyway, middleweight, Scott Askram and Chris Dempsey. We talked about bantamweight, Davy Grant and Marlon Vera. I don't care, man. I don't either, although Davy Grant, doesn't he sound like a plucky Brit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, I mean, I could... Sounds like Mark the Match Boy. I went through a period where I was reading a lot of Horatio Alger, man, and uh, – and man, you you get to the end of that book with Mark the Match Boy and all these, and you just feel like, man, it's gonna. You walk out into the world and you're gonna, like some 
some rich older gentleman is going to take me under his wing and and t and then you realize yes there is a rich older gentleman but under his wing is not where he's taking you buddy <laughs> <laughs> under the bridge is might might be where he's leaving you yeah, exactly. done. but i had to read a horatio algebra book in college from 19th century that was uh kind of a hard slog but i agree it sort of had a certain prep to it i could yeah. see where it could get you geared up for another day in the factory all right so Mike Wilkinson and Makwan Americani, featherweights. Don't care. Don't care. So that my prediction was correct. We had one care on the whole card, prelim card. Yeah, don't care. Don't know who these guys are. It's clearly they're sweeping up yep. the flotsam and jetsam of their European contracts and just yep. Yep. laughing yep. Them on this card and, and, yep. and no one cares. All right, so here's the four fights that they think matter. All right, Bantamweight, Francisco Rivera and Brad Pickett. Yep, care. Definite care, definite care. Brad Pickett, uh, lost battalion. Super close, man. In any case, he's a gict, you know. So, uh, I, you know, but he's fighting another quasi gict. So, I, I, you know, but I'm just gonna have to go with Rivera, you know, because people, it's like it's like blood in the water. You can smell, you can smell when it, it's like a, it's like that the people become ectoplasm when they start to go lost battalion. You know, the, the mist envelops them and they're half in and they're half out and you can sense it and nobody wants to lose this guy because nobody wants to take his place. So yeah. I, I say Rivera fights with a vigor renewed. Yeah, because he's got three losses in his last six fight, yeah. whereas Pickett has five losses in his yeah. last seven. Yep. I think I think that the momentum of circling the drain is strong with Brad Pickett. <laughs> 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 uh, man, oh man, a Shevitz. Yeah. It's, it's a rough it's a rough life man you know? it's a it's a cruel world it's well you know what world. you know what before we get too into the to feeling sorry for these guys remember that the career path before ultimately ended up as a junior high school wrestling coach so if that in england they didn't even have that i i, I don't know where brad pickett would have ended up it, i think something like the uh brad pitt role in the movie snatch would uh Come you know, I met, a, I met a guy over there who was doing that kind of fighting, and I was like, yeah, how, how, you know, what kind of – he goes, hey, man, I can make 5,000 pounds of fire. What? He goes, yeah. I go, you got to book a fight for me. You got to book a fight. And he's like, you know, you don't want to mess with these guys. I, I don't give a fuck, man. I have 5,000 pounds. That's like 6,500 American dollars. I'm in. I'm in. I fight. And he goes, well, you can't take anybody down. It was like, eh, what? <laughs> You mean boxing? Oh, not, you're not fighting, boxing. Goes, yeah, I, I'm not so much a boxer, but $6,500, man. Somebody's got to want to pay that money to see, you know, a loud mouth African American get his ass kicked at. So, you know? what, 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 uh, what uh, 80s new wave song would you select for your knockout uh, ode? Like they used uh, uh, the Stranglers Golden Brown when. Uh, oh, yeah, that that, 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 that that was a good one. Even though I'm not thinking about the Stranglers as an 80s band, I always think about them. With stiff little fingers as late seventies. Yeah, um, but that new wave phase was totes eighties. I would probably take something by the Talking Heads off the top of my head. Talking Heads. Heaven, huh? heaven is a place. I don't, I think nothing. you got to go Euro, dude. I don't think you can pick something as old. Oh, then 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 it, then, <laughs> then it would be something by Kraftwerk. <laughs> <laughs> I get, you are resisting the uh, British keyboard overlords, the synth lords. We're calling you, Eugene, and you are fighting the call. All right, so we're both picking Francisco Rivera. And to the dude who's counting our picks, stop it. This is for fun. And I love going. it. Keep counting them, baby. <laughs> Keep counting them. It favors Eugene. Yeah, Eugene Houdini Robinson, the man yeah, who sees the I pick, future. I pick against you to make things interesting. Then we have some. Oh, oh I like I like how you step away. That's nice. I these are not earnest picks. I'm just trying to keep the game going. I got me. It. Me and Bill Crystal, we just make our picks and predictions tongue in cheek. And I thought you were going to say Bill Cosby. That you kind of made me nervous. Here. I've never heard about Cosby's prognostication abilities. Just <laughs> his yeah, his his prognostication abilities only go one way. You You're feeling sleepy, sleepy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we've got welterweight Tom Brees and Kieta Keitero Nakamura. I almost care because of Brees, but not really. So I'm going to say no. And no love for Keitero. Nope. Nope. Yeah, that's for you, that's for you but I'm not going to take that chance. I, you know, the the only kind of care that that will bring me is sad because <laughs> the dude, the dude is, uh, I don't even think this is K Taro actually. Yeah, no, it is K Taro. Okay, that was scary. <laughs> the only type of care this brings me is sad. <laughs> yeah, I've been for this catch right. huh? so many times, and uh, and uh, that makes me know, very happy actually. 
Well, he's got a he's got one win in his current UFC run uh, wow. over a Chinese fighter. So we know not to be racist or anything. Hey, yeah. easy, buddy. China's a big, big place. It's a big, big place that has yet to produce a competent professional mixed martial artist at the UFC level. So anyway, so K. Taro is coming off of basically a gimme. You have disgraced me, and you have disgraced a Shaolin Temple. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true ah tom breeze i gotta i yeah I, he's undefeated nine and oh he yep. he took took out cathel pindred yep. how do you say cathel I, I can't even remember how to say it do you well, know the, the one guy from here who would know is now escaped so i, I can't i see it. all right cahill uh, anyway yeah, all right cahill. so now we get to the good stuff middleweight gaygard musasi and talus latus yes of course we care Yes, yes. And I'm going to go with Gagard, man. I, I am a hopeless, endless Gagard uh, nut jumper. I'm going to have to. Man, this is a tough call because both these guys are sort of spiraling around. Latest you know, had they're, that... they're, they're, strangely enough, they are clearly phantom toll booth, but guys that good shouldn't really be. I mean, they're not major tommed, you know. They're, no, they're, no. You know, They're not I mean, flying out in the stratosphere. They're still very good fighters who could beat ninety nine percent of the people on earth, and they've lost those big fights at the highest level. To me, Tallis Lita is losing a split decision to Michael Bisping in a fight where he could have been more aggressive is less damning than losing to Uriah Hall by TKO. No, so, that come on, that Uriah Hall thing was freaky, and uh, uh, you know, ninety nine more times that never happens that way. He was. He was he was winning the fight before he was losing that fight, but that That's could just true. be my Musashi nut jumping tendencies. It it could be, but I mean he's lost to Jacare, he's lost to Leoto, he's lost to Uriah Hall. If he loses to Talos Litas, it is totally lost battalion. Might even be Phantom Tollbooth. Time. No, no, no. You're, he he he's he's Phantom Tollbooth now. He'll be Phantom Tollbooth if he loses to Litas. Lost battalion has to do with his his level of self awareness. And it seems to me, I don't know the man. It seems to me he, he's probably got a pretty good sense of exactly where he is. The Dutch tend to be realist. But he's Armenian. Dutch Armenian. Yeah, he's Armenian by way of Holland, but that doesn't make him Dutch. Where did he go to high school? That's a good question. That's, that's, good where, question. You're, that's where you're from. Guys say, oh, I'm from New York. You oh, know, my wife would you go fight, to? fight you bitterly on that because she was born in Austin. We went to high school in East Texas. When I introduce her to people as from East Texas, she always squawks. Oh, of course squawks. she does, because so, everybody knows what's happening in East Texas. Nothing. nothing. A lot of – and if it does happen, it's bad. But, ah, man, this is a tough one. I don't trust Talos Litas, but he's had this long win streak. And I don't trust Gegard Musasi, and he's been real iffy. I got to go with Talos just because you're picking Gegard. All right. See, this is why – Okay, the, the guy who's – Mark that down. Mark it down. Show. Uh, yeah, mark it down, dude, and then and then and then I'm gonna ban him. I'm gonna ban him. <laughs> no, 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 you can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is there any point? I mean, though, these guys, 34 and 30, they're pretty young, but they've got a lot of miles on their bodies. They got a lot of fight miles, man. Young, 30 of the 30. That's because it's a totally different thing. You guys got sucked 60 fights, you know. Yep. Yep. And the, the, with the drug testing regime, they can't go to old uh, Uncle Randy's medicine cabinet like he used to be able to. Like, like, I don't know who Uncle Randy is. Hey, man. It was, was Randy ever actually busted? He was busted he, for this. No, he was never. Uh, to my knowledge, he was never actually busted. Oh, okay. I mean, the, what Randy are you talking about? I was just talking about some guy named Uncle Randy. But, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I certainly I like, wasn't talking I, you about know, I, The times I've met that guy, I like him. He's always been unfailingly nice to me. But I've never heard a single person say any good thing about him. You know? I know. That's the thing about uh, Randy Couture, is, uh, who is not the Uncle Randy we were discussing, just yeah. in case his attorney's watching the show. But uh, Randy Couture is a guy with a persona for miles. I mean, every, how can you not love Captain America? I mean, you know, he fights. He's, he's got a great fighting style. He's smart. He's able to articulate things. He's, I think, the best third man in the booth they've ever had in the UFC. But everybody who's done business with him or been married to him comes <laughs> out pretty bitter from what I can gather. According to the reports I've heard, you know, you're not going to be seeing Randy Couture Day at Matt Lindland's gym anytime soon. Yeah, or, but you know what I think? Thing. I think the thing is that, you know, when you get to that certain, when you get to that certain Mike Tyson phase of life, 
where you just, you don't put up with shit that normal people put up with, you know? You just don't do it, man. And, and it's like, it's hard for people to understand. I, now that I'm, you know, the, the age I am, I kind of have a certain understanding of like, you know, what is that thing that Bob Dylan line? You got to pay to keep from going through all these things twice. I just don't have the kind of shit that I would put up. I, I think about the shit that I would put up with when I was 22 and I'm like blown away. I just won't do it anymore. I don't give people second chances, nothing. I don't have the time. But, you know, it seems like Randy, Randy has been, this has been his ethos for quite a while. <laughs> Some people take to that uh, uh, fame and fortune ethos pretty naturally. And it seems like Randy was a natural. Yep. At yep. being uh, at disposal. Hey, making of tons of money is not going to change me. It's going to change the car I drive or where I live and the, the friends I hang out with, the clothes I wear, but it won't change me. I've always been a heartless sociopathic asshole. So, uh, you know. That's, exactly. Uh, that, that, that's sort of where we were going with that. Yeah. And, and I, was the, I was talking about me, not Randy Couture in that instance. Yeah, Again, me too. I was Chinese listening listen. as well. Yes. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, we got to be clear on that. All right. Now the main event. I can't believe it's on Fight Pass. Anderson Silva versus Michael Bisping on Fight Pass. It's, how the mighty have fallen. I, I don't look at it that way. I don't, I don't how, do you, how do you look at it, Osir? I, I, I look at it like um, I'm going to go the other way on this. You're thinking about the wrong way. These guys got to – this is – you know, it's it's – the viewership will be huge, and that's exactly what they need right now. If they had to put me in a position to decide, am I going to spend $60, $65 to see it? You know, I'm going to go through a lot. No, I'm not really going to do that. But, you know, these guys are loved, man, and this is a comp. But this is – I mean, we're all watching for the same thing. We're all watching to see, you know, if Silva is lost battalion or if there 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 is a play, you know. I mean, now that the, the aura of invincibility, I mean, you know, you know who, who Chris Weidman is fighting right now, now that he's lost the aura of invincibility? You know, his, his, uh, his lumber pile in the backyard. His lumber pile in the backyard. But like somebody like Tyson said, you know, or suggested in terms of Ronda, he goes, you got to make a friend of losing. You know, it's, it, it's tough if you've never done it. But once you do it, you realize it's not the worst thing. You got to, you know, whether or not you can get back on the horse. That's why I'm watching. You know, I mean, you got, you got a depleted Weidman. Is, is Weidman's head well enough so that he thinks he's still been touched by God and that he is like this undefeated, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. So, I mean, ultimately, Anderson Silva nut jumpers are looking for a sign that Anderson Silva is on, on the comeback or at least maintaining enough to challenge a, a, a Biz, or not a Bisping, a, a Weidman for a third go at it. And they both would need it now. You know, but only only you want to see it if the guy can be a credible competitor and not lose again and, and renew, you know, renew Chris Weidman's belief in himself when he's in this damaged, weakened state. So, uh, I mean, that's it, it. It's a it's a it's a smart thing to have it on Fight Pass, and it's a must see. Even though I yes. won't be seeing it live because I'll be training. <laughs> uh, hey, man. hey, buddy. Hey, at noon. You know what? My jujitsu career is more important than his fight career. To me. I see. I see. Well, the. It'll be a little a little afternoon, I think. Uh, California time might be. No, closer. I'll just I'll, I'll just bring the laptop here and have it on when we train. But. I, I thought you were going to say tango lessons were coming out. That's at night. That's at night. Ah, that's at night. Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, I think you're as always. You're spinning an elaborate scenario. It's like Hitler living to the bunker and then somehow getting to Spain and Argentina and being flown to, to Barcelona by Otto Scorzani and then taking a, a submarine to Argentina as many did. The the, they call them. They call them the rat lines. Huh? The more you talk, the more reasonable it starts to sound, and the more oh, I question okay. All right. how so I came to this place. A guy born in 1975 is going to make a fly that he shot himself in a basement. Come on, everybody knows egomaniacs like that don't shoot themselves in basements. Well, that's why you had to have Goebbels come in, faithful little Joe Goebbels come in, hobble in there, and and no. plug the fear in the head. No way. No way. No way. No way. Martin Borman, maybe. After after Hydra got killed, they they got serious about their their doubles program, you know. I see, and that, you're talking about the butcher of Prague, of course, one of the yep, most yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, Hitler's cousin. I mean, Hitler, his village. He had them bomb his village and and bulldoze it under. This is a guy who would not hesitate at all. If he could have gotten his cousin, who uh, his half brother, who escaped to England back to Germany, he would have iced that guy too. They have no mistake. You know, I just I was just reading about that guy in a Beatles biography, and uh, and and then uh, Hitler, of course, had his other cousin, or was it a niece who he had some sort of bizarre Gelly 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 Rabel, yeah, 
Romantic. Apparently, Hitler was into Ondinism. What what is this? I heard something to do Golden with Golden showers. It's getting near the hour. <laughs> <laughs> I heard something about glass bottom boats or clean yeah, cleaners. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know, but it was all disgusting. I mean, you know, back in the thirties, this must have been a scandal, you know. Uh I think back in that day they just what happened behind closed doors happened behind closed doors. So you actually had a lot more latitude behind closed doors. Yeah, you know? but you know, if it's pee pee play, that shit gets out. <laughs> <laughs> And in the carpet. And um, yeah, a buddy of mine, a woman says, I want you to pee all over. He goes, what? On my bed? <laughs> I was like, he had it thought it through. That's the point where you go to the bathroom instead of the bathtub, but whatever. Yeah, the, the, the hottest girl I ever came close to getting my hands on started talking about rubber sheets, and I, I freaked the fuck out. That was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, a buddy of mine almost got picked up by Joan Jett, and in the last, he's like in there in a dressing room, and he goes, when faced with it, he just folded. He couldn't handle it. He's like, I gotta go, and he, and he left. I go, what happened? He was like, fuck it, man, it's Joan Jett. I couldn't, couldn't deal with it. Said, that's the moment where you gotta, you know, that's almost like my my Bjork sex story. Wait, wait, wait. Let's finish the Joan Jett, but we gotta get back to Bjork. So was it the aura of Joan Jett? Like he just. Or was it the actual sort of hairy upper lip? No, 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 no. This was Joan. We're talking Joan Jett of the 80s, right? So it was, and he had gotten backstage because a friend of his was friends with somebody in her band. You know, and he was kind of a handsome surfer looking dude, you know, and uh, he's backstage and Joan Jett comes in, you know, sweaty, her shirt hanging open and she sees him and it's like, yeah. And she's like, why don't you come on in while I, and he's like, so he realizes he goes into her dress room that it's just the two of them sitting there. And he, she's like, um, so, hey, like, what do you, you know, I mean, it was the roles were completely reversed, right? The guy was not, he's not used to being the hunted, you know, she's like trying to get him back to the hotel room and somebody interrupted them and he goes, I gotta go. And he took that as his cue to leave. He just couldn't, couldn't deal. See, you know, my brother has a tale very similar. He saw Joan Jett in Tulsa in the oh. early 1980s. And uh, there was like very few people there and he claims she was hitting on his friends. So we'll yeah. see. Hey, man, I man. thought she would be hitting on girls, but maybe there were no girls at the show. You know, women have told friends of mine, you believe you should try to have sex with me? And my friends are like, what? So, uh, that's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. Now back to the Bjork story. We've got important news to cover here. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I can't tell that right now. <laughs> no, no, the Bjork story. No, I'll, I'll actually tell you. So, so this she had a musicians in her band, right? And this guy was in her, in her band. Not the Sugar Cubes, but her solo band. In her solo thing, and so they're on tour, and the guy notices, and and he's hearing whispered talk that as they go on this like five week tour that she is systematically kind of like, you know, picking and choosing from the guys in the band, you know? And the guy's like, he's one The old guy slick gambit. Yeah, right, he's like, am I gonna get, am I gonna get my chance? Am I gonna get my chance? And then one night after the show, she's like, oh, it was great, it was great. Hey, we should, hey, let's, let, let's you know, get, have a few drinks, come on up to the room. So he comes up like, this is it, man, this is like it, you know? And he goes up to Bjork's room and he says, it was the worst, sexual performance of his entire life. He was like every, in other words, as a dude, you know what this means. Every single thing that could go wrong went wrong. He had a hard time getting it up. You know, he, once he gets it up, the erection is inconsistent. It's floating in, it's floating out. Finally, he, he gets stopped with the condom thing. He's got to get the condom, it loses again. Finally, he gets it up, he gets the condom on, he sticks it in, God, bing, blows his load, two strokes, and it was like, what do you do? <laughs> At that point, she's like, well, and he's like, well, and this was three weeks into like a five-week tour, so he mm -hmm. had to like every single night, you have to live with it, and then she picks other guys who like, you know, do a little bit better, members of the audience, the whole bit, it was like, that was... That was like a hellish, I can't, as a guy, I can't imagine anything actually more miserable outside of that surfing story I told from a few weeks ago that was pretty miserable. The uh, Or the uh, uh, the uh, three-way that ends in tears for two. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> or the four-way that ends in tears for three, I believe. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. That, that was the four way four so that ended up in tears for three. Ah, uh, sexual humiliation. You know, the best strategy when faced with a great slick player in your band is uh, – 
what Marty Bellin did, the other singer for Jefferson Airplane, was say, no thanks, Grace. I'm flattered, babe. You're hot. I'd love to, but no. And so she was after him the entire 20-something year career of the band, whereas, you know, the drummer got fired. He had like a two-year run at the top of the band, but then, yeah. Yeah. you know, you're yeah. gone. Yep. Well, you know, what this guy should have done, he, he should have played it, and then like the night before the end of the tour, you know, trying to go, go for it, and then if he had a terrible performance, he could blame it on, I was just emotional. Because <laughs> at the end of the tour, I didn't know. What was yeah, doing. yeah. I mean, you have to you have to come up with pre excuses, so you're not stuck trying to come up with an excuse at the time. You know? uh, yes, yes, that is. That it's is like starting a jujitsu competition. It's like, yeah, 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 my arm. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have I have a, a terrible uh, bad sexual performance story that is not something that happened to me, but it was something that was told oh, to by a dear oh, friend, oh, yeah. and not me. Okay, not. <laughs> I'm not into any of this stuff, but so the dude has this hooker problem. Like he cannot resist a massage parlor, cannot uh -huh. resist a street walker, uh, none of which I approve of. He's driving home from tubing all day, which is something we do in Central Texas on the lovely little river. So he's okay. filthy. He's covered with sand. He's in terrible, ugly clothes. He sees a sign for Asian massage, and he's like, "I could use an Asian." My back's aching from all these rocks in the river. So he goes and he knocks on the door, and this hideous old mama son answers the door and he's like yeah. oh, you know wrong number and shuts and leaves but there's another massage parlor around the corner so he goes and knocks on that door same mama son answers the door <laughs> this time he feels like he's obligated because you know i mean she knows he's not looking yeah. 7 11 down the street or whatever he goes in she throws him a towel he goes in the room his Blood freezes when Mama Son walks in the room in a negligee. So he thought, you know, there's going to be another younger, prettier. This whatever. story makes me so happy. If I were <laughs> him, he, the guy, he was looking at the wrong way. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> that is, you're going to have to explain that if I finish the story. So Mama Son comes in there. It's a, it's a massage with a happy ending. She's getting to the happy ending. Like you say, he can't get it up. Nonetheless, he still manages to spurt seconds into the happy ending, and she goes, "You worst ever, worst ever." <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yes. Oh, that's, so that's, that was uh, that was a well deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, no good deed goes unpunished, my friend. Exactly. So, why would you love the ancient Mama Son? I, I, I actually, well, we need to talk about that some other time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in a I'm in a place where nobody would understand. I see, I see. All alone on the island. No, right. no, 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 no. Right now, it's uh, something else. I see, I see. All right. Well, we've got a few minutes left. We do need to give this fight, Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping, a little more attention because it merits it. Anderson Silva coming off a year long layoff after being suspended for. Um, Oh man, let's, let's, don't 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 yeah. don't don't even mention it. Just don't the, just the, suspend let's it. Let's just say the excuses were implausible. It was a wild fairy tale, even better than the massage parlor story I just yeah, told. Yeah, 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 don't. Bisping is having a late career renaissance. The guy's never been accused of not working hard, not training, not being well rounded. Once upon a time, Silva would have toyed with him and demolished him. But the last two times we've seen Anderson Silva, he was either getting knocked out or breaking his leg against Chris Weidman. Then he fought Nick Diaz, last three times, fought Nick Diaz one-ish, and then failed the drug test. Where is he now? How old is he? How I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm incapable of being sensible about, about Silva. I'm going to pick him. Um, and mostly, I still can't pick Bisping because of when the, the cheating thing. It wasn't his fault. You know, the ref gave it to him against the Rivera, George Rivera. I thought that was. Oh, and was also that one. the judge's decision against Matt Hamill. And Matt Hamill also like still, it, uh... still sticks in my craw. I've forgiven him for both of those, but I just can't pick him against Silva. And, and I know it, I'm not thinking about it rationally, but I don't care. I'm not. I don't have to be always rational. <laughs> I almost forgive Bisping for all his manifold sins every time I look at his eye and realize the guy had his eye poked out, essentially. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, I can't even remember who poked his eye out, but it was a notorious. Well, he, rede he redeemed himself by being beaten savagely by Dan Henderson. So that's when I started to forgive him because that gave me such pleasure. I just ran that again and again on my computer. <laughs> you know, Johnny Utah in the air punching him, I, I, you know, but – 
Um, but I still can't pick him against Silva. I just can't. Not against a Hall of Fame Silva. A guy, a, a guy, diminished legacy or not, I don't care. I love the guy. It was so. it was Belford that smashed out Bisping's eye, wasn't it? Or not? But That's Bisping sad. had the karma because he poked out Alan Belcher's eye himself. Correct, correct. So, um, yeah, so I got to go with Silva, whether it's logical or not. It has the feels. Yep. Anderson Silva, one of the greatest of all time. Mm. But just a an artist to watch. Like just yeah. watching Anderson Silva highlights is a thing of beauty. I think yep. anybody can enjoy, even people who don't like violence, just because he's so amazingly coordinated and yep. quick and skillful and creative. Yeah, so yep. that's our show. Care don't okay. care. Saturday, fight pass, watch it, UK, London, whatever. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube, Eugene. How do we do this? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm ready, man. There we go. I, I, there we go. My right. thumbs up were preloaded. And that's a trick to keep Eugene from stopping the broadcast prematurely. We've let Eugene in on that. After if, the he, fact. If, he right. see, if he can see my hands, he knows I'm not pressing any buttons. All right. The Twitter, uh, follow us at Eugene S. Robinson, at Kid Nate. Ozzy.com is where you can read Eugene. I got a sex column up today. All right. Yeah. I thought that was coming out on Sundays. Uh, they, 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 this, the, things are happening. If you've noticed, there's been an uptick in a number of my pieces that have been running. So, ah, well, good, good. I'm glad yeah. to see the, uh, things are moving. All right. And you my, can read my, hit, my Hitler piece being. They let you the publish the conspiracy theories, conspiracies about Hitler. So great, man. It was great. Yeah, That's great. Uh, what the, yeah. have you been contacted by suspicious German Argentinians or anything? Like, like Danzig said, Wolverines in dark brown suits. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, be yeah. careful when you're playing with the dark forces, Eugene. Some things are better left unsaid. Yeah, right. right, right, right. All right. And you got to subscribe to MMANation.com on YouTube. Subscribe to MMA Nation on iTunes. And you can hear us without seeing us or MMA, MMA Nation on SoundCloud. And that's it for our show. Adios, MMA aficionados. I'll be back with the sixth round Saturday after the fights. Eugene will have knuckle up on Sunday night. Adios, and we'll see you next time. All right, man.